This is Thursday, June 23rd, 2011. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Dawn Ross. Welcome, Dawn. Thank you. May I ask when you were born? I was born August 21st, 1959. And where were you born? Norwood, Mass. What is your current address? Do you live in uh, still Norwood or elsewhere? I live in Framingham. Mm -hmm. um, I live on Longview Road in Framingham. Your marital status? I am happily married. Children? I have two wonderful boys. One is 28 and he lives in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And one is turning nine tomorrow. His, his name is Warren. And he, he's my little nine year. I have 19 years difference between uh -huh. my boys. Wow. You were saying a little something about your family background uh, before the interview. Let's get into that first before we start your military career. I understand your father was career Navy. He was. He, um, uh, he matter of fact, he was on a ship when I was born, so he was not there uh, when I was born. I didn't get to see him until two months uh, after I was born. Well, of course, I don't remember it, but he lived, ate, and breathed Navy. He, mm -hmm. uh, we were brought up in a household that um, you, you know, you valued military mm -hmm. service. He was proud, and it was a, gr and I had a great. Um, uh, upbringing in regards mm -hmm. to the respect for the military. And was he a World War II veteran, Korean War? He was Korean War uh, mm -hmm. into the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was um, on, he was a, he got to the rank of Master Chief Boiler Technician, which is the highest um, enlisted rank that you could get. Mm -hmm. He also, um, he was a recruiter. He taught at the War mm -hmm. College in Newport. One thing that I was always very proud of, he always tried to keep us, even though he, got, he was stationed on many ships, mm -hmm. uh, one being the USS Wasp, which is a famous ship, mm -hmm. but um, he uh, kept us in one place until he g got transferred from this area to South Carolina, and that mm -hmm. was where he was born and raised. So the whole family moved back there. Um, mm -hmm. I had stayed in Massachusetts while they moved um, mm -hmm. around. So. Is he still with us? He's not. He passed oh. away um, in um, October 2009. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, we had a beautiful uh, um, service with mm -hmm. very Navy-oriented, military-oriented service. Mm -hmm. And I understand your brother also went into the Navy. My, my brother, he was two years younger than me, but he went into the years uh, to the Navy two years prior to, to, to my, my mm -hmm. enlistment. And matter of fact, we both went in the same, under the same recruiter, so he was very proud uh, that he got two family members. And my brother was, he um, retired as a machinist mate chief. Um, and he, um, he's retired to South Carolina as well. Mm -hmm. And what's his name? His name is Robert Barnhill, and mm -hmm. my dad's name was Joe F. Barnhill. Mm -hmm. you, he always said Joe F. Barnhill, USN retired. <laughs> And now we come to you. Oh, now you went. You were born and raised in Norwood. And I was. I was born in Norwood, but we were. I was born and raised in Rentham, Mass. Mm -hmm. uh, as when my family moved, we were stationed in Charleston, South Carolina. I stayed in Mass. Moved from just two towns over to Medway, Mass. Mm -hmm. And I'm a proud Medway graduate, uh, nineteen seven class of nineteen seventy seven. Okay. And did you go into the Navy right after that? I did not. I started, uh, I wanted to be an art teacher, so I actually went to college to be an art teacher, and after a year, um, I said, you know what, I'm gonna take a year off and, and uh, work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, matter of fact, I rose to the ranks at, uh, at the Filings Distribution Center in Natick. Uh, it was on Speen Street, a great company, um, I was in the um, executive training program. They plucked me from the masses, and um, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed my time there. But um, I always felt like I needed something more, so mm -hmm. when I was 21, uh, I moved down to be closer to my family in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. It was in a recession, so I was like, okay, military service, sounds good. Mm -hmm. I found a position, um, you, they had the delayed entry program where you right. could mm -hmm. find out what you really wanted to do um, and you could say, I will wait till that 
uh, that job becomes available, that, that billet, as they call it, mm -hmm. becomes available. So I, I enlisted in September 81, and I reported for active duty in June 82. And of course you did basic. I did basic. I mm -hmm. will say, I because I had that year of college, they plucked me uh, to be a sectional leader in boot camp. Um, I don't know if that was a curse or, or <laughs> not, but I will say that boot camp was one of the hardest experiences I've ever had in my life. June, July, and August in Orlando, Florida. <sighs> I, I actually lost 35 pounds in boot camp wow. um, from all the activity in the... And the mm -hmm. blood, sweat, and tears. Um, my my um, group was the first group in the history of uh, the um, recruiting, the um, training six uh -huh. in in Orlando to actually get what they called flags. So mm -hmm. our group was the first women's group that that got every single flag that you could have, and and we were um, celebrated, and it, it was made a big deal. But I will say, even though it was nice on that end, it was. Tough. Mm -hmm. It was tough. I did not expect everything that I was going to get. So after Orlando, what happens? Okay, I was very excited to go to my to really start going to my school to get my training mm -hmm. in anti-submarine warfare in Norfolk, Virginia, mm -hmm. and we called that A School, and um, that was a uh, five and a half month school. And I absolutely um, really loved what I was doing, and I loved the, the the everything I was learning. It was so new and things I'd never thought about before, and oceanographic um, uh, information mm -hmm. and things of that nature, and different um, mm -hmm. types of um, shipping and submarines. So I learned all this things mm -hmm. that I had never thought I would be, enjoy. Did you choose the training, or did the training choose you? I choose. I really, when I look through everything mm -hmm. that um, that was available mm -hmm. to um, women at that time, mm -hmm. um, and there were some things that women could not do still at, at that point, mm -hmm. but this was something that um, was very interesting to me, and I said, I, I want to do that. And it was kind of like the only thing I really wanted to do. This was well in advance. This is before the enlistment period. This was when I mm -hmm. was doing my research and um, looking to see what I wanted to do. They, the Navy wanted to put me into a, 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 a like a corpsman type uh, with a medical field or a dental tech. But I, I kind of just held out for this ocean systems technician because mm -hmm. it, it sounded really interesting dealing with, uh, with oceanography and shipping and submarines and things of that nature. So you're there for five months. Um, anything more you want to say about that that base? Um, I um, I definitely enjoyed it. I never thought it, it snowed that much, and I remember it snowed a lot in Virginia, and I just didn't <laughs> know that. Um, and I had forgot to tell you, but um, right before I went in, I got married. So I had to leave my husband, mm -hmm. um, and uh, at that time. And I just, uh, the day after I got back from the honeymoon, I went to boot camp. Wow. But we had a nice big wedding. It was mm -hmm. like, okay, so I got married. Then I left him for, t you know, 10 weeks. And, um, but he did follow me to Virginia, so mm -hmm. he was there. Then after that, I went to advanced training in mm -hmm. Centerville Beach, California, which is a small town um, um, south of Eureka, California. I went there for six weeks for advanced school to learn computer systems. And um, the one thing I remember about that was my first um, earthquake, and it rained every day. So, not a good, not a good experience from mm -hmm. that. But. Um, I will say the one thing, it was uh, raining a lot, so we spent a lot of time inside, and mm -hmm. lo and behold, on my way to my first duty station, I realized that I was pregnant. <laughs> so before I even got to Newfoundland, I there I was just going to the Navy, mm -hmm. having reported my first duty station, and there I was uh, with a baby, <laughs> uh, well, pregnant with a baby. Wow. And um, so I... It was a, it was a strange because they said that my husband had been coming with me the whole time we were going to go to Newfoundland and then they said no we, we can't have him come so mm -hmm. that was even worse but he did come with me and they would not we couldn't get base housing so we lived out in the Newfoundland community mm -hmm. which was um, was very interesting uh, it was a, a little bit of hardship that but I, I 
we really didn't have a lot of money because he wasn't mm -hmm. working, he couldn't work because mm -hmm. he was an American citizen. So we had, I remember having a, rented a, a house, it was a whole house for $90 a month. Um, it didn't have any heat mm -hmm. <laughs> or hot water, but we, we, we when I think about, about the, the, how we worked through that, mm -hmm. it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you can work through anything. It made, made me stronger. Uh -huh. um, and when you first get your first duty station, you have to do um, nine, three months at a, either in the kitchen or in security. So I had the lovely duty of doing um, a sentry duty outside in Newfoundland, um, waving the cars in and checking vehicles mm -hmm. um, in sub-zero weather with uh it seemed like it never the winds never stopped howling so that was january february and march oh, so i always get the wrong months <laughs> i know really so did you ever ask your father or brother uh did you ever go through anything like this oh yes my of course they said they had it tough because they they spent a lot of time on ships mm -hmm. um and you know uh, they they always said I had it so easy compared to what they had it because uh -huh. they they were had the small and it was very hot. My dad was mm -hmm. in and my brothers both were in down in the in the bottoms of the ships in the mm -hmm. in the heat and with boilers and machinery and things like that. So mm -hmm. when I think about their struggle, it wasn't as bad. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was as bad on mm -hmm. me. One of my previous interviewees uh, was in the early '60s. She had actually married uh, in the Navy. She actually married uh, into the uh, a Marine Corps uh, sergeant, I believe, and ended up pregnant. And she could no longer serve in the Navy. So obviously, things changed. It, things changed, indeed. I I will say um, it was it was a rough part. It was mm -hmm. a rough patch because I did develop com complications with my pregnancy, and I was out of. I was on um, bed rest for for four months, mm -hmm. in out not even on base. I was out, off base, without any family, but I will say uh, my my husband was able to get an on base job, so he was able to 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 work. But it was it was a mm -hmm. it was not a fun time. Right. I will say that I when I find I gave birth, um, it was a hundred mile ambulance ride to St. John's, Newfoundland, from where we were. Mm -hmm. And um, I just we just got to the hospital in time, and, and I had I had the baby, and um, he uh, he was he was a healthy little guy, uh, and um, he he uh, doesn't remember too much of Newfoundland, but uh, he it was it got better because then I was able after they give you four weeks off after you have a mm -hmm. baby, so finally after I had been there in September. Um, I believe probably September 21st, um, 1983, I finally got the report to my, my job. I had the night shift, mm -hmm. the uh, like the 10 to 8 in the morning shift, so that was my first shift. And um, I can remember feeling welcomed mm -hmm. and I really got to, to learn a little bit about what all the schooling mm -hmm. that I had. They had to be refreshed because it had been uh, six months or so before mm -hmm. I'd, I'd gotten there. So it was really really a, a great time and a great mm -hmm. great camaraderie so okay you're married with a baby you're in newfoundland how long did this last this lasted for i st it was stationed in newfoundland for two years mm -hmm. uh and as an aside my grandmother who basically uh was uh, i was the apple of her eye she was my idol she i love this woman was from newfoundland so um, she was able to come and visit when I had the baby. She came mm -hmm. right before I had the baby. Matter of fact, the day I had the baby, mm -hmm. they, um, my, my father had come up to bring mm -hmm. her there. Um, and my, my father had not, did not stay long enough for me to have the baby, but right. she mm -hmm. was there with me. But then um, we got to go to see where she um, was oh, raised wow. and brought up. And it was, uh, it was kind of nice, even though I didn't really want, I wanted to go to someplace warm, but mm -hmm. it was nice to know that there was family um, in Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. What was your grade at the time? Um, I, was, I was an E3. Um, Mm -hmm. So um, that was right out of boot camp. Mm -hmm. I was a, a seaman, they call it seaman um, apprentice in boot camp. And then I was, a, when I left the boot camp, I was a seaman recruit. And then while at Newfoundland, I made petty officer third class. 
but that was a little bit longer in the in the mm -hmm. journey there. Okay, so what happens after Newfoundland? Um, Newfoundland. Um, what I did in the Navy, there really wasn't a lot of places that they could send you, but one of the places that I could, could go was it, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I figured, okay, I had to go to Newfoundland, very cold, let me, let me try to go to Hawaii. Not thinking how far away it was from everything, but so my husband and my son now, now that he's, he's uh, two years old, mm -hmm. uh, we go to we pack up and we go to Hawaii, mm -hmm. and I get off the plane and I just absolutely adored Hawaii. I loved it. It was it was so um, wonderful and pleasant. The weather, the people. Mm -hmm. um, I just immersed myself in in the uh, atmosphere and the um, population, and I um, I loved it. We mm -hmm. we had base housing, so that was a, a plus. Um, right in Pearl Harbor and it was it was beautiful I did have to take a small boat um, or a ferry over mm -hmm. to work as I worked on Ford Island mm -hmm. um, which um, was the small island uh, right right there where the all the battleships were at mm -hmm. when when Pearl Harbor happened um, I will say uh, I love my job I, I, I um, progressed up the ladder to petty officer second class um, and I got into the quality assurance department. So because of that connection, I was able to move my family to a, a home on mm -hmm. Ford Island to be closer to work so I could be on call mm -hmm. because of the, the ferry and the boat because they didn't mm -hmm. have a bridge there. They have a bridge there now, but they did not right. when mm -hmm. I was there. Um, which, even though you were kind of isolated on the island, but I absolutely here. I was an enlisted person with my. And it was there were single homes. I I did you know usually Navy housing. You have like four living in one, mm -hmm, you know one right. structure. Mm -hmm. This was a, a home, and I will tell you as close as it is, it is from me to um, to the the sidewalk was where the where the where the water was where the ocean was. Um, I was the backyard was directly right near the Pearl Harbor Memorial. Wow. I could see that, you know, clear as day. It was mm -hmm. from here to the, to the street. Um, it was beautiful base housing, and I, I loved where I lived. Mm -hmm. um, and then as my son, my son was growing, and he loved it in mm -hmm. Hawaii. And, and uh, my husband got a job in, in Hawaii, in town. Mm -hmm. um, so things were, things were going great, and my career was going great, and I, I was going up for petty officer. Um, I had got second class, but I was going up for petty officer first class, um, and I had uh, taken all the pre-qualifications for the test. I had got the highest level in my uh, study area of what mm -hmm. I did, um, and I uh, I decided um, it was time. For, I re-enlisted, as a matter of fact, right there overlooking the Arizona mm -hmm. in my backyard for the for. Um, four years, so mm -hmm. um, it was uh, it was wonderful. I love what I did in, in the military, mm -hmm. um, but I I was missing my family so very very much. I only came home once in the four and a half years I was in Hawaii, and I would say that was the biggest reason why uh, I I decided. It was a heart-wrenching decision because I, I thought maybe I would be in 20 years, I would retire, but I decided that I was going to get out. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, there are days I do regret it, mm -hmm. that I didn't stay in, especially, you know, knowing um, some of the people that have found me on Facebook mm -hmm. are still in, that I was serving with and they're, you know, they've been in over 20 years now. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a small regret. Yeah. Tell us about what it was like during the Cold War. Um, you know, it was, uh, we, I mean, we were scared. We didn't know, you know, we knew what kind of capabilities that the Russians had. And we totally believed that they, uh, they could aim their cruise missiles and, and, and hit us at any time. Mm -hmm. So we were very vigilant um, on any sort of uh, movement that they had, submarines, shipping. Um, we uh, we actually had training on how to spot if somebody is trying to trying to um, if they were spies and try to um, try to get information mm -hmm. from you. Uh, my uh, my job in the in the navy was secret. Mm -hmm. um, it has 
been declassified since 1981, uh, excuse me, 1991. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, we can speak about it, but there were, I couldn't even tell my family or my husband what exactly I did. Um, so I, I think it's, you know, because of technology and because of our relationship with the Russians, mm -hmm. um, with the Soviet Union, that um, my job no longer exists in the Navy. It's, it, it's gone to some higher technology that I'm not privy to. Mm -hmm. But what we did, all the bases were closed. Um, that we stay, the naval, we call them naval facilities. Mm -hmm. um, they're closed now. And uh, other things, because of technology mm -hmm. and our relationship with, uh, with the world, um, things have changed. Okay. So you were in the Navy for a grand total of? Um, active duty seven mm -hmm. years uh, and um, inactive one year, so mm -hmm. eight years. What happened after Hawaii? Um, that's when I, uh, you know, I, I left. I thought I would want to get, a, I would love to have gotten a civilian job mm -hmm. in the field that I worked in, but that would have meant I would have had to move to Florida or California. I was almost decided on Florida to go, but mm -hmm. then I just, I hadn't been with my family. I missed my family. Everybody's growing up. Mm -hmm. um, my son didn't have his cousin. So I, I said, you know what? I'm going to go back to school because I had saved mm -hmm. money Right. with the, um, it was called VEEP, the mm -hmm. Veterans Educational Assistance Program. So I went full time to get my, my associate's degree in business. Mm -hmm. And I did that um, in two years. I worked part time, went to school. Um, and then I started working for uh, Radisson Corporation mm -hmm. um, as an executive housekeeper and trainer. And that was in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And um, seemed like a, a, a typical position in South Carolina because uh, there, it's, Myrtle Beach is a very touristy place. So it was kind of like my degree was in tourism management. Mm. Um, so I was able to, to raise up the ranks at Radisson. Mm -hmm. When I decided that uh, I wanted to um, have a more nine to five type mm -hmm. position, so I worked at a large corporation there called AVX as the, uh, the, the building manager, kind of mm -hmm. like a project manager for the, all the landscaping and housekeeping janitorial. So I had a large staff anywhere between 75 and 100 people. Mm -hmm. So I did that and then I decided I wanted to do the same thing. So I went to work for the state, mm -hmm. um, had better benefits, stable hours. Uh, so I did that. I worked at Coastal Carolina University, and that's in Conway, South Carolina. Until? Until? I reconnected. Oh, oh, oh in the meantime, I'm sorry, I got divorced. Okay. <laughs> forgot to tell you that. Um, mm -hmm. South Carolina got divorced, mm -hmm. and uh, my high school um, sweetheart, my college sweetheart, who we were engaged back in 1977, uh -huh. we reconnected. Um, and I uh, came up here for a visit in 2001, mm -hmm. and uh, we had been having a phone uh, relationship for uh, two months, which his phone bill was outrageous. <laughs> I was in South Carolina, he was here. Mm -hmm. So then I came up here, he got down on his knee, he says, I loved you once, I'll love you now, I'll love you forever, will you be my wife? Wow. So now, um, and so I, leave my job, my home, my family, everything, and I move up here. It was two weeks before 9-11. And, oh and um, there were really no jobs and, and nothing, but I, I had found a job. I wasn't happy with it. I won't say where it was. I'm happy now. I'll tell you, it all comes around full circle. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, and lo and behold, 42 years old, mm -hmm. I find out I'm pregnant again. So he had never had any children. So now we have a, a wonderful, almost mm -hmm. nine tomorrow, um, son who we love and dote on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I made a new life at Framingham State University. I um, kind of continue on with my uh, working in a higher education. I love that population. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've been there almost nine years. I've been in Mass 10 and been there almost nine now. And I absolutely adore 
my job. I mm -hmm. am the internship coordinator and career counselor in the career services office, and I assist students and alums with all their career services needs. And I get a lot of self satisfaction from helping these students mm -hmm. with their career paths in finding employment. I understand, uh, this is before the interview of course, that you uh, had some connection with veterans groups? Uh, yes, I was, when Framingham decided, mm -hmm. the students decided, we have some vets there, that they mm -hmm. want to have a veterans organization on campus. Uh, the leadership came to me and said, would you please be our advisor? Mm -hmm. And I, um, I was the first advisor for the Framingham State University Veterans Association. Um, I realized it was a little bit too much. I did it for a year and a half, and, mm -hmm. um, and I decided that I would resign to uh, put a little bit more emphasis on working with in my current job. I, mm -hmm. I, um, but I'm there for them. They come, you know, I'm there as a resource for them. There, there are not many, um, I don't really know of, of any other staff members that have military service mm -hmm. um, such as I. So I think it was a natural um, for them to ask me, but, okay. uh, but I still are very close to, to all of them and I, mm -hmm. I, I love working with helping veterans try to, to get their, their military resume, their military um, what tasks and duties and and qualifications onto a resume mm -hmm. and be able to get them civilian work mm. while they're going to school. That have a passion for, the, for working with vets. Okay. And I'm assuming that most of the veterans that you're dealing with are Iraq, Afghanistan era? Yes, they are. Anybody older or? Um, not right now, no. They're, they're, they're um, Iraq and Af Afghanistan veterans that mm -hmm. I'm working with. I, um, some of the people in the community have uh, have come in to sit in on some of the sessions, and they're uh, they're like Vietnam veterans, mm -hmm. but not currently that I know of at Framing M State going to classes and, and enrolled. Okay, and are you a member of any veterans organizations? Um, I. I know. <laughs> um, I am a member of the Student Veterans of America. That mm -hmm. is a, a group that tries to advocate for students um, across the campuses wor um, nationwide. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a member, but I, I haven't gone to any of the um, conferences or things of that mm -hmm. nature. But our students go to them. Mm -hmm. Our students have gone to the last two conferences mm -hmm. of the Student Veterans of America, which which is out of Washington D.C. Okay. Uh, any other organizations like the Legion, VFW? I have not. My father was, but mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, we're all, we do feel welcome. Mm -hmm. I I know what the invitation is for everybody. Um, I I don't know. I just have not. No, but I know they're there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dawn, is there anything else you'd like to present before this audience who are about to see this uh, interview? Well, um, I would just like to thank all veterans, mm -hmm. past and current service members. I thank them for their service. We have everything that we have in this great country mm -hmm. we owe to the military, service members, and veterans. We would not have this great and strong country as we would today without military. I would love for my, my, my sons to go in. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I advocate for military service. I had a, one of my best friend's sons. Um, he's talking to me about it because of my experience. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? I have, I always, always try, you know, try to, to say this is a great way to start your, your life, mm -hmm. to learn leadership skills, to learn your service of country and to feel good about yourself, your self-esteem. There are so many reasons to go into the military. I know some countries it's mandatory that you go into the military. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it has to be mandatory. but. I, I, I personally highly recommend uh, a military experience to mm -hmm. make you grow as a person. Well, Dawn, thank you so much for taking part in the Veterans Oral History well, thank Project. Thank you, Maureen.
Thank you so much.